I don't care how you make it work, just fix your ice machine. Ah! Let's make shrimp scampi. Let's get straight into it. Now let's go. All right, let's start with our prep, AKA knife work. Always start with your knife work when you're doing a recipe. I'll make the whole thing more enjoyable. I'm just smashing it here. Big cloves of garlic. That's the easiest way to get it out. I don't need your devices. I'm a big believer that you can do almost anything with a chef's knife. It's true. You can do a lot more than you think. Also, I like to keep a little bowl handy just for my scraps. That's just so I'm not walking back and forth to the trash can all the time. And I like to just take off that little woody bit if there's one on the end. And then we're just gonna rough chop this garlic. Smashed and rough chop is a great way to use garlic. Now our little shallot here, we'll just half it like so. Take off that little piece. And I'm gonna make a little V cut right here to get that root out, just like that. Then we can just peel it. And then starting at a little angle, we'll just julienne the shallot. When you get about three quarters of the way through, you just wanna flip it like that for safety and do the rest. Now most of the time you're gonna see chili flakes in scampi. I just wanna try Fresno chilies today. I'm gonna to put chili flakes for you in the description if you wanna use that method, but Fresno chilies are incredible. Fruity, not too spicy, I just love them. So that's what I'm doing, just one of them. And now I'm just gonna julienne that up, just the same thickness of the shallot itself, shallot. Now Italian parsley. What we wanna do here is just pick it off the stem, just bust it out, the real top part Parts of these stems are so tender, you don't really need to get rid of those. But anything kind of below that point, it's just a little woody and fibrous. And you'll be chewing on it like a cow, so don't do that. It's a healthy amount. And then as with most of these soft herbs, like cilantro, parsley, etc., you want to ball it up like that, right? It's pretty easy to do. And that's going to really help this slice so much easier. When it's compacted, it's just easier to slice. You got to try it for yourself. Don't be using any of that curly parsley in here, okay, my friends? That is for decorating a turkey on Thanksgiving and... Well, that's it. That's the only reason God created that stuff, for decorating turkey's armpits. And maybe I'll just do one little run through like that. You don't want to bruise it too much, but my knife is pretty sharp right now, so it'll be fine. And I just love using my little dough scraper here to clean up my board so easy, and then you're not scraping your knife. Now here I've got some white shrimp, AKA Costco shrimp. They're farm raised from Ecuador. And all I'm looking for when I'm buying shrimp is that they don't smell bleachy and weird. You know when you get that weird bleachy smell on your shrimp? That's weird. That's weird. Also, if you can get them with the heads on, always preferred. And buy them frozen. Because the fresh shrimp you're buying at the store is just the frozen shrimp they had in the freezer most of the time. More bang for your buck. Now take one of your shrimpies. Remove the head. All that head juice, orange stuff. Well, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's full of flavor and I have learned so many cool dishes using shrimp heads. This one will be no exception. Now, I like to start down by its little feet or whatever its little swimmers are. And I'll just take my thumb like that and just guide it around, get that little bottom bit. And with the tail here, I find it's really easy instead of trying to pick it apart, you wanna get this section right here where the tail meets the body pinch and then gently pull that out. It should just pop right out. Last thing to do, since these are whole shrimp, they're not de-veined, de-pooped rather. We make a little slice along the back. I think you can see that vein there and I'll just stick in the tip of my knife and just pull that out and discard that. On further inspection, I believe this is the row. It's an egg head situation. Now, if I'm being very honest with you guys, this task, not one of my favorites, not one little bit. Slime as a texture is my least favorite texture. It's way, way down. Also, if you're really freaked out about eating the heads. By the way, eating shrimp heads are a part of many, many cultures. Nothing weird about it. But if you're freaked out about it, just save the shells and you can do the exact same thing. Coffee break. Because you peeled the shrimp, you deserve a little something something. Yeah. I'm switching to matcha soon. I can't handle this stuff. I really can't. Ah! I'm a snob because if my coffee isn't making moves like that, I'm just not interested. Also guys, the fridge is over there now. It gives me more room for attacks. Now we're going to do one extra thing for the shrimp scampi is we're going to blister tomatoes. If you've never had a blistered tomato, now is your time because they are incredible. We're not going to put them in the pasta. We're going to serve them with the pasta. Stick with me. I'll make you a star. Now you can do this with cherry or grape tomatoes. I just got a ripping hot pan. It's been on high heat for about four minutes. I'm just going to lay in those tomatoes on the vine. This works on the vine. These are sugar bomb tomatoes, by the way. They're the best. They're always so sweet. And now for safety, basically, we put them into a dry pan and then we put the oil over and you'll hear them start to pop right away and whistle and stuff. Just about a tablespoon of oil is all you need. And what we're looking for here is to black in the bottom of these, which is happening quite nicely. Now, just about three, four minutes here. Now flip them upside down onto a plate. Now we just hit those with some quality extra virgin olive oil, followed by a little Malden salt right here on top. This is just a sea salt from England. You could use any old salt, just don't use iodized salt unless your driveway is slippery. And some Master Sergeant Gilbert reporting for today. 
That is just black pepper. And we'll let those kind of soak in that seasoning. And I'm telling you what, these are just so good to eat. Now, one more thing before we make the pasta. We're just gonna zest a little bit of lemon, cut it in half so we don't have to do it while we're in the heat of things. And try this next time you zest your lemon. Hold your microplane like this, your thumb on the bottom, the base of the microplane on the top, and pull down and you work your way around the lemon like this. And I'm telling you, you are never gonna get a job that clean doing it the other way. I don't see even ch any chefs doing this. Now the great shrimp scampi dilemma is, should you season and sear your shrimp or just drop them right into the sauce? And there's a little trade-off happening here. The thing is, if you season your shrimp and just drop them into a sauce, all that seasoning is just gonna wash off. We want it to stick to the shrimp. However, dropping them straight into the sauce is gonna make for a more tender shrimp. Searing them, however, is gonna have that seasoning stick and also give them a really beautiful color and a little bit of texture on the outside, which I prefer, so that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna season them lightly, a little salt, mold in again, and we'll do the other side in the pan, make things easier. Now, same pan, I just cleaned it out. We're gonna bring it up to medium-high heat. We'll add our oil, quickly add all of our shrimp. Season that other side. 30 seconds and we flip. We are not trying to cook these all the way through right now, just get that nice color. There we go, just another 30 seconds and out. And make sure you spread these out a little bit so they don't keep steaming and cooking. And they're literally a minute away from being done, so they'll go in the sauce for one minute and they'll be perfect. Now, same pan, keep that heat high. Another two tablespoons of oil in the pan. And let's make our egghead sauce. Straight in with your shells, little touch of salt. And by first cooking these heads in a little bit of oil like that, we're intensifying the flavor, concentrating. Now, once all those heads and peels have changed to a nice cooked shrimp color, we're gonna add our dry white wine. Turn down the heat a little bit now, and essentially we're turning what most people would throw away into an umami bomb of shrimp flavor. Now, we reduce for about two, three minutes, and I'm also just gonna crush a little bit these heads so we make sure we get all that stuff out of them, the egghead goo. Now, my liquid's drying up pretty good. There's probably about a half cup left, maybe a little more. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to bulk it out. You could use fish stock if you have it around. Even chicken stock, I think, would be okay. And then we'll just cook this for another two minutes, and then I'm just gonna pass this through into a strainer. This is a chinois. You don't need a chinois. Any old strainer will do, as long as it doesn't have super big holes. And now I really wanna just push and work this a little bit, get out any of our egghead shrimp. Then you can discard that. And I think this is just a beautiful way to think about food, you know, using all the ingredients you can to make something really special. Let's taste that. Don't wanna to use too much. Yo, forget it. The flavor on there is unbelievable. Now you can serve your scampi with whatever you want. It's great with rice, it's great with pasta, it's great with even mashed potatoes. I love it with mashed potatoes. I'm using this Italian brand pasta. This is called Trophy. I, I don't know if I'm saying it right. And I actually don't like a lot of the pastas from this brand except this little one. But any old pasta will do. But these are pretty cool. They look like little mini croissants before they've been folded and baked. Now salt your pasta water. Don't go too crazy with this, just like a half a tablespoon. We don't need it super salty. And drop your pasta. Give it a little stir, no reason for olive oil in here. Now pan on, medium, medium high heat. And when your pasta is about four minutes from being done, so if it says 10 minutes when it's been cooking for six minutes, then we'll start this. Olive oil in, two, three tablespoons. I'm not shy. We'll start with our garlic and shallots. A little pinch of salt, pepper. Remember there's salt in the stock, there's salt from the pasta water. So you just go in little increments and bring it up to where it needs to be. 90 seconds later, we'll add our chili. This is when you would put your chili flakes, if you're doing that, cook that down. Whenever you're cooking garlic like this, you wanna think lightly golden brown, or even just lightly golden brown around the edges. That's the point when you wanna stop cooking it. So just another minute on the chili, now we're gonna add the shrimp stock. Wow, look at that color. Now I'm gonna turn the heat down to low, just a touch over low, and we're gonna start working in cubes of cold unsalted butter. Doing this over low heat, is really gonna help those emulsify in without breaking your sauce. You could go straight olive oil here if you want, but I love the butter in here. It balances out the sauce, because you need that fat as the counterweight to the wine, right? Fat and acid, you hear me talk about it all the time. Taste it now for seasoning. Mm. Oh my God, this is insane. Tastes incredible. We're gonna add our lemon juice, a little bit of the zest. Keep working in your butter. Now while that butter's still working into the sauce, we add our shrimp. Let any juice drip off that plate. Turn up the heat a little bit now. These shrimp literally need 45 seconds, probably to a minute tops, and they're perfectly done. We don't need to be cooking shrimp for five minutes, right? 30 seconds on each side in the pan, maybe 45 in the sauce, and we're good. I mean, how good does that look already? The heat here is still pretty low. I am just gently 
finishing off these shrimp, right? Gentle. And now we add our pasta straight out of the strainer. Just let it drain a little bit. A little bit of pasta water is good. Gonna help season the sauce as well. And it goes, now toss. And that pasta is gonna thicken up your sauce rest of the way. Parsley last. We'll put in about 75% of it and save a little for on top. You wanna do that parsley last so it stays nice and green. Even now, heat off, right? We're done cooking. The pasta is like perfectly coating the sauce. Let's plate. Serve with some of your blistered tomatoes. And you have a scampi you'll never forget. Let's try. Oh, oh the fridge is gonna get it. I'm excited, we have so much more room to play. And play we will. Ah! Without a doubt, the best skimpy I've ever made. Skimpy? <laughs> the best scampi I've ever made. And the way these blistered tomatoes pop in your mouth, this is the best scampi I ever had, my friends. And I hope you'll make it. And I hope you'll like, subscribe, and leave a comment because I know if you're watching the video right now, you're a true friend. And until next time, you know I 